In December of 2019, Unicorn Riot was given the opportunity to cover the ID Green Camp Gallery project. Located in Durban, South Africa, the Green Camp was founded in 2013 by a man named Holani Longwa. Holani describes the Green Camp as an organic and sustainable lifestyle hub, focusing on urban gardening and creativity in all its forms. In this video, I interview Holani and his fiance Wilson Nielsen to talk about how the Green Camp came together, its approach to the current climate crisis, and its plans for the future. What is your background and what brought you here to South and what brought you here to South Africa originally? Okay, my background is that I'm born in Sweden. And then when I was three years old, we actually lived in America, me and my family, in North Carolina, uh, through Volvo tracks, my father. Volvo. Yeah, so <laughs> I actually spoke English before I spoke Swedish. And um, when I was seven, we moved back to Sweden and I was raised there. And I lived in a very quiet, uh, stimulating uh, Swedish middle class, upper middle class uh, family. And then Sweden has this uh, amazing aid um, program, which basically the only objective is young Swedes go out and get international experiences. And the Swedish government pays everything, basically. So through actually the YMCA, I came to South Africa. I moved in here in a tent because no one will, will see this thing beyond what it is or this property beyond what it is. It was scary, I understand that. Um, it's quite a new thing here, so... You started living here in a tent? I lived here in a tent for two years, camping, because I had no support, no money. No one saw it. They thought I was crazy. They're saying I'm Rastaman, look at the hair, and then I'm just smoking weed. I'm here to just smoke weed. and. No, it was like a, an education program. It's a very academic and architectural, and then we're building urban farms. So if I speak that language, like people are like, oh, what are you qualified with? What are you? Where do you come from with this idea? It's never, we've never been heard before. So it's like, hey, you are in your own world. So I was alone. Even the families, my family and um, family members, they were like, there's no time for this really. And I don't blame people. Like who wants to come back from, you know, flats and uh, apartments and, DSTV and internet and just come back and live in making fire and washing in a small basin. So it seems like quite a move for someone from your background to come from the Scandinavian, like you said, privileged background to come yeah. to this place which barely has running water, uh, no shower, you know, any, any of the basic amenities that you're used to in a modern Western society, right? Yeah. Um, talk to me about the struggles of having to adjust to that new lifestyle and what made you uh, want to do that in the first place? What was the motivation for wanting to, to stay here and say, I'm going to be here no matter how difficult it is? I'm quite a adventurous person. I think I've always been quite bohemian, so to say, and, and not afraid to just dive into things and communities, new communities. And I think I still feel that it's an adventure. And I think Green Camp is, is, is teaching me to go with nature and go with the flow and you can't predict that. Yes, I had such a plan. I was supposed to only be six months in South Africa and then go back to my full-time job and you know, my pension plan there and have a, a flat and everything with the running water. Mm. So that was my plan, it was quite shocking. Uh, I didn't expect to find you know, a lifetime partner, but it was too much with Kolani that just felt too good to be true. Uh, not everybody will break away from that and chase the identity and spirituality and connection to your, your roots. That's, those are the circumstances that brought me back from Scandinavia, back here and saying, no, I want to go back to where, where the ancestors are, uh, 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 the drums that are beating and then the sun that is warming, and then try to talk about this language, at least in a soil that is fertile, where there is sun and rain. Because this is urban farming. I could have started in, in, in Sweden. I could have started in Europe, 
but it is less sun there's uh, there's um there's uh you know we can't grow as much as and so the soul of that is not really as as as, as powerful and, and warm as here no one wants to stop working and getting a salary to come back and clean the city uh, however i was forced also to clean one small fraction of the city because it was going to be my home i was homeless that's another story for a day how can i be homeless in my own country and uh, my family is here my mom is here everybody's here but i was homeless that's that's the reality of an african person globally that's what racism is that's what that's what we're dealing with every day it's a topic that no one touches it is sensitive but we're homeless we're homeless in your own because of identity you have to be employed by someone else who's going to give you a salary so that you can come and try to save your family from that's just like the whole value chain is is flaws so you we find ourselves homeless and i'm not i'm not shy to say that and i'm proud of saying that uh, from homeless to creating then a home from from nothing tell me about uh, what has the reaction been from the local community here yeah so uh, the, re the reaction is not very surprising uh, we live in a very predictable environment uh, South Africa as a country, it's got like a, a, certain, a, 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 certain, a certain phenomenon that is called race, the race is different. So there's groups, there's not very complex groups, it's for them. Uh, uh, black people and we have a group of colored people which was, which sprout out when the Western called Caucasian people met the black people and then came together and created this uh, a culture of colored group that became a culture here and a race in South Africa and we have an, an Indian group that was brought here from India for, for, for labor purposes back in the days and then we have the whites so reactions of course are like typically different for all these groups you know a, a local black group will, do, will, will react differently mm. the colored groups they get the Indian people are mm. white locals mm. so let's mm. talk about that mm. Now we jump into the topic of racism, but we can't just talk about the topic of racism without talking about the past because also the reaction of the people is based on the education they've had so that they can be able to equip to react when there's something happening in their lives. So it's a very interesting. Uh, mostly the black people and the colored people will be a, an automatic group that will be benefiting from this project, but their reaction is they're against this project or they don't support this project because mm. they don't see it as what it is intended to go. They see it as what it is now. It's an immediate kind of a, a, a visionary, mm. a vision. And of course, a person who's in a dire, a poor space, they don't want things that are showing signs or, or symbols of poverty in them, if I can put it like that. They always aspire to buy a glossy and flashy and Green Camp is not that. I'll just jump straight to a Caucasian group which is mostly privileged, a very small number that does not really necessarily need screen camp, but it's a very cheek and kitsch spaces where people are privileged, they wanna to go to now down and, and, and see this rustic and be part of this rustic for a couple of minutes and have fun and maybe donate and feel good about themselves and go back to. But those people are the ones that are reacting to green camp. Hmm. And because they understand this thing where it's going as, 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 as an urban farm, it's not a very common culture here in the southern part of the hemisphere. It is not um, a, a, a method or, 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 or a visual that is it's still a very f uh, foreign thing and very new. So people are still are looking at it at distance and question marks a lot. However, they see the benefits of it and then it touches everybody. But like from reacting and interacting with it, they look at it from far. However, the privileged families and communities, they come here and they realize this, which includes, of course, the tourism. So now those groups are now starting slowly to understand the actually mathematics of the urban space and the design of it, which means then to think about broken buildings in the urban space turning into urban farm is going to be a very long thing for people to catch up. Yes. However, we here, we understand that we are in the, in the, in, in, in the forefront of this uh, activism and uh, we don't mind the slower reactions or faster reactions of people. Mm. Our intention is just to make sure that we are here and we are here first and then we are here to leave this for generations to come. Um, when we talk about uh, being environmentally friendly or you know eco-conscious, the easiest thing or, or the, the first step a lot of people take is this recycling. Okay, with containers, metal and paper and glass and people start to recycle. Mm. And that's one of the easiest steps, of course. Indigenous knowledge talks also about nature that we're not 
we can't take from nature we're just borrowing from nature and when you borrow it means that you have to give back it's quite simple so if I if I take a carrot from the soil I have to give back something to the soil I have to make compost maybe mm. um, mm -hmm. and that's the smallest step um, deprogramming not just saying okay I have money so I have the right to take this carrot because I gave you money but money isn't giving back anything to the soil so it's I think it's reconnecting to the soil which is very difficult in the urban space when it was a in-depth uh, study about people that are so called environmentally conscious why are they and when when the biggest factor was when they were children they were out in nature there were scouts or they were gardening with their parents or they had a relationship to nature from very young ages and that when becomes awareness in everyday life when you're an adult so it's simple as that urban children for example because urban I see that as the biggest challenge ur ur urban lifestyles uh, if we if we sneak in more soil <laughs> just throw soil at people yeah. I don't know but get people just touching soil and and seeing how things grow just short term I guess where do you see green camp uh, moving as far as locally and, and even nationally uh, the short-term goal is to create employment first for the smallest member that have been working trying to build this up we have to set a platform on how to receive these well uh, 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 um, uh, um, uh, skilled people uh, on how to then uh, set up infrastructure but also if infrastructure is set up it has to be maintained so that it can provide education programs for the children that are growing even the grown people that are grown that needs to learn so it has to fully fun it has to be a, a gallery project has to be a fully functioning system that has infrastructure that is secured to provide health platform it's, people call it they call it hospital or where people can come and spend time healing both internally and externally. Uh, second of all is the schooling centers which is education centers which is school university if you want to. Mm. So, third of all is an economic center which provide and hubs and teach people about money and also how to invest it. Just a month ago something like that we stumbled upon um, a village or a small a, a plot of land with different houses that were for sale. Yeah, we managed to secure those properties so we can start building also a village. And it's quite cool feeling that I'm 33 and this is what I would dream to as a retirement plan. But it's starting already and I'm so young and I'm so, I feel so blessed in a way that at this young age I've um, I've come to the realization for my own life that that's where my health is or the future of my family. So we're starting to develop a Green Camp uh, village project in a rural area parallel to this. Yes, so Green Camp is looking again on three universes for help. It's uh, spiritual support, uh, positive thinking, sending so positive vibes when you mention Green Camp on air. You can send us blessings where you are, that's enough. We need resources within knowledge and skills and hands and money and uh, support in saying you guys are good. You're doing good things. That's always nice. What's up, Wanda? Thank you so much Thank for allowing me the opportunity. See you on Gagaku. Hey, see you on Gagaku. Thanks so much. Until next time, this is Polani. Yeah, bonga, yeah, bonga. Oh, yes. Mr. X. Yeah, bo. It's good that we finally had a chance to do this. Hopefully, this won't be the last time. Uh, again, my name is Dee from Unicorn Ride. We are reporting from Durban, South Africa, in the Glenwell community. Until we meet again, see ya bonga kakul. ID. Identity. Identity.